In this video, we want to study 1D partial differential equations of the following form. Here, f is a regular function of u. This equation describes the conservation of the quantity u. It can be written in conservative and non-conservative forms. In this class, we will pay special attention to the Burgers partial differential equation. Two numerical schemes will be implemented and compared to the analytical solution. We are interested in solving the Burgers equation with the following initial conditions. As we saw in the last video, this problem can be solved analytically using the method of characteristics. This method consists of reducing a hyperbolic partial differential equation to a family of ordinary differential equations along which the solution can be integrated from some initial data on a suitable hypersurface. In the present case, the solution forms a triangle that moves to the right, keeping its maximum value until the formation of a shock at x equals 1. Before the creation of the shock, the solution can be written like this. Then, at t equals 1, the characteristics intersect each other and a shock is formed. We also saw that using the rankine ugonio relations, we could obtain the shock speed. In order to solve the Burgers equation numerically, we are going to test two different numerical schemes. Here, sigma equals delta t over delta x, and this coefficient is related to the stability condition of the scheme. In fact, as we discussed in the first video, we know that the CFL condition must be respected to achieve stability. However, unlike the previous case, the Burgers equation is no longer a linear problem. Since the deviation speed is no longer constant, it is necessary to have a variable time step to respect the CFL condition in all grid cells. In our routine, the calculation of the time step at iteration n is done in the following way. Thus, the CFL is equal to 1 in the cell where uj is maximum and less than 1 in the other cells. The numerical simulations use periodic boundary conditions, and the domain is discretized in 101 points, giving a grid space delta x of 0.04. We analyze the results at two instants, t equals 1 and t equals 2. Great! Let's try to run our Python program. For the first simulation, we observe the formation of a shock at t equals 1, but it remains stationary over time. The speed of the discontinuity does not agree with the exact solution. Thus, the first implemented scheme does not capture the displacement of the shock and gives a misleading result. This phenomenon can be explained by the fact that the first upwind scheme is written using a non-conservative formulation. We can rewrite this scheme in the following form. To explain this problem, let's consider the points that are located after the shock. This equation shows that the information coming from the left will not be transmitted, since the advection speed, u and j, is zero according to the initial condition. Therefore, this scheme gives a wrong result for the Burgers problem. One way to fix this issue is to use an average of the deviation speed between the surrounding cells. Let's consider now a new upwind scheme that uses a modified advection speed. Let's run now our Python code using the new formulation, keeping the same numerical parameters from the previous simulation. Unlike the other scheme, the modified scheme correctly captures the shock displacement and agrees well with the exact solution. We note that after some developments, the new scheme can be written in conservative form. The lesson learned in this lecture is that we should always use a conservative formulation to solve a conservation problem. The next step is to solve numerically the compressible 1D Euler equations. Are you ready?